Hey, hey, hey. Wait. Okay. My friend's going through something. I should probably text her back. I will. Anyways. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Kay Marie and I'm super excited to have this talk with y'all today. Um, I It's really funny, I created a whole different video um, a few days ago um, and then I was like, you know what, I don't really want to post this right now, it's just a lot of energy behind that one. So I was like, but I do really want to talk about sex and sexuality and pleasure um, because it's something that I've been exploring for so long for since 2019 um and i've had a very interesting relationship with sex um but sexuality extends beyond just sex sexuality is so many different things i'm probably going to do a lot of follow-up videos to this like one on exploring gender and one on exploring sexual expression <clears throat> really like all of that stuff um but sexuality is so much more than what's painted to us it can be your sexual identity you know like who you love who you like who you you know connect with <laughs> it can be your sexual expression um it can be basically how you show up sexually um how you display yourself it can also be how you engage with sex um and so that's kind of i don't know if i'll touch on everything i'm really just gonna let myself flow and let myself talk um but there's so many different intricate parts to sex and to sexuality and I think it's really important to explore that because one, it helps to release the idea that sex is taboo and two, um, it lets you understand yourself a lot better and three, it challenges, it challenges the compulsory nature that we associate with our sexuality. Like, we're born and we come into this world and we're never really allowed to explore it because one, it's seen as taboo, um, but also there's so many cultural norms and standards. And again, this, this, basically all these things are pushed onto you and assumed of you. It is assumed of you to take on a specific sexuality. It's assumed of you to engage with sex in a specific way. And it's been very, very harmful to people's exploration of self, but also harmful in the way that we connect with each other intimately. It really it really alters the way that we interact with each other and um, causes, in my mind, a lot of harmful interactions and a lot of misunderstandings and like lots of shame. There's lots of shame and guilt around sex and around sexuality. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about it and kind of go through my sexuality and how I process it and how I got here and what I do and you know everything that we should be thinking about in terms of our sexuality. So um, I guess we'll start with where I came from. Um, I used to be really fucking straight. Um, really fucking straight. I was, <laughs> I was cisgendered. I didn't even realize the concepts of gender. I, I didn't understand them uh, because I just also thought gender was like sex when it's not. And I was just like, oh yeah, I, I, I'm a woman, like whatever, you know? I had never really thought about it. Um, I was just going along with what people told me and what was assumed of me. Um, same with my sexuality. I was just like, oh yeah, men, like dating men. Um, but looking back, I can see where I had a lot of intimate connections with like women that I didn't know were signs of like love or like romantic love, you know? Um, Looking back, I can definitely see that. I also have some trauma around trigger warning. Trigger warning. I also have a lot of trauma around sex um, just because I've been assaulted different times. Um, but healing that in itself is interesting because, yes? One moment. So yeah, I've experienced um, various like assaults in my life and honestly, I was trying so hard to like work through that and whatnot and I didn't really know how I just thought it would come through my experiences with like having sex but honestly what's healed me most in regards to that is my exploration of my sexuality my exploration of my gender and my exploration of what makes me feel good and what's pleasurable to me it helped me heal from the trauma right yeah so um that's where I come from I went I experienced those things when I was young um I got into a relationship when I was really young like 12 12 14 something like that and um i was really hypersexual from like then to i would say 18 19 really really hypersexual um like 
very hypersexual and now looking back I know that it stems from you know trauma um I also know that I have a really strong desire for pleasure and when I have that strong desire for pleasure and goodness and happiness it typically translates into wanting more sex or intimacy luckily um I, I guess we're gonna discuss this in one video I don't know what it is um luckily I've explored my intimacy and I've, ex I've explored what brings me intimate feelings I've explored what brings me pleasure and so when you're able to really explore your your erotic desires and what brings you pleasure not only in sex it translates into your everyday life so that you're seeking intimacy you're seeking pleasure you're seeking goodness and it won't translate into what I need to be hypersexual um, sexuality pleasure intimacy it's all intertwined it's all interconnected um, and so when you are exploring yourself and you're, you're exploring your sexuality you're actually exploring your pleasure you're exploring what brings you joy you're exploring your identity and what makes you feel good and that a lot of people don't think about that when they think about sex or when they think about sexuality but it's it's all intertwined and so I was able to really heal a lot of my trauma um, and and kind of step back from the hypersexuality because I found other avenues to express my eroticism or desire that I had in my body um, because ultimately all of your feelings all of your emotions the things that you want they, they live in your body first they speak through your body first they sit in your body the sensations you're feeling in your body are telling you something about yourself or telling you something about your environment regardless of if it's regarding sex or whatnot but I was just able to channel all those sexual um, sensations into my passions into my desires into intimate moments and like little things and acts of comfort that I need um very interesting some people put their sexual desires it's gonna sound weird some people put like their passion and pleasure and the erotic things that they feel that aren't fulfilled they put that into food and they start binging food or they start really connecting with food because that's what makes them feel comfortable and intimate and close with self listen I could do a whole dissertation on this like I could go and do a whole essay on this but I'm gonna try <laughs> I'm gonna try not to we're literally just trying to talk about sex and sexuality and I'm like telling telling you guys all these extra different things but any fucking way it doesn't matter any fucking way <laughs> anyway sex sexuality um that's where I started you know just being super straight um really sexual really hypersexual um and then I gave birth to my son um because of course I got pregnant <laughs> like um I gave birth to my son and after that I was like kind of in and out of sex but sex just started being different for me it wasn't the same like not because I had a baby but my energy everything was shifting around me and I remember being like 18 and a half maybe 19 I had just moved to Arizona and I was in this group chat with some cool people and I was like guys I just I started like I had started like I don't and the word isn't fantasizing but I was on a healing journey I had started my shadow work I was just joining spirituality I've always been spiritual go look at my other video about how I got into spirituality but I was just getting into like new age spirituality and I think the more I got into it the more open my mind was a lot of the binaries that I saw completely fell because I was doing so much inner work and asking myself like why am I like that so when I got to the well why am I, why is my sexuality like that I realized that it was very compulsory and so literally literally it, it like over the course of a few months I opened my mind to the possibility of liking other genders of liking um all types of different people and I, I remember like it, it, how I see it, it was literally like a mind switch it was literally like a wait a minute why was I restricting myself for what for why and I literally just had to be open-minded to it and it's so weird to me because it's like everything just started clicking <laughs> everything just started clicking after that like I remember texting some people and being like guys I like would love to like explore a girl and like kiss a girl but I don't know how far I would go and I was like does that make me gay <laughs> and they were just like hey just try it see what you like right and so I was like okay okay I'm gonna try it sure like one day it'll come I'm sure I'm not gonna like freak out about it I remember telling my ex at the time that I think I'm interested in women but I wouldn't want to pursue it and I remember at that moment thinking that and telling him that I wouldn't want to pursue it and I told him that out of like basically I think fear out of fear that I wouldn't have him or that I wouldn't like men like it was just like it was like I shut myself down to my own sexuality 
um, for the validation of men or like for be, so that I could stay in connection with them. Like I don't really know. I don't really know what it was, but I just remember saying it, but still wanting to. And I think I was still holding on to the idea that sex and sexuality was like taboo or whatever. I don't know. Um, super interesting. But I told him no, I wouldn't want to explore it. But then I, for me, the more I repress stuff, the more it like festers. Um, so I just don't do that. It's also why I don't lie because it's like, well, bitch, you know, you're not good at that. You know, I'm not good with keeping shit down. Not good with like hiding my feelings. I'm not good at that shit. Okay. But whatever. So I had kind of kept it down, but my, our, my relationship with him was just, it was not good. We ended up breaking up, which was cool. And I remember um, my first experience, I had told him like, I like this person that I see on social media. Like they're kind of cute. If I could talk to them, I would. And then literally in the next like few months after we broke up, I ended up connecting with this person and just talking. And at this point I was just talking to the other women just like as friends. And I was in the spiritual space. In spiritual spaces, there tends to be a lot of queer people because I think that we're all dissecting our personalities our individualities we're all actually like doing a lot of shadow work and so when you do that and you start breaking shit down like shit gets real um but i was just talking to other people in the spiritual space and there's so many queer people that i just grew like natural friendships with people and then with my first this first person that i started talking to i was like damn i kind of like you and it was like but i feel more i feel that flutter i feel that like excitement when i'm when i'm around you i feel that like connection like i want to be super close to you i feel that intimacy um and so you know intimacy can exist in so many different spaces but i think um i think for me the switch was when i literally just opened up to my mind to the idea of well, what would my intimacy and closeness look like if it was even more with these people and i realized that it would tread into um physical touch and um probably like just really closeness intimacy wanting to be super i don't want to say enmeshed wanting to be i would i want to be closer i want to be more intimate i want to be like so i just remember like opening up my mind to it because i i just did i was like well what's stopping me um this is what i this is what interests me right so i just opened my mind i connected with people and i found that i really do genuinely love like queer people <laughs> i've never felt so understood so loved so cared for the intimacy and depth that i was so searching for and the emotional intimacy and depth that i was looking for in the past relationships that i had it was like it really was not there um being seen was not there and so when i started when I just came out as queer and I started engaging in these connections, even the ones that are not romantic, I I just found so much love and so much emotional depth and felt like people actually see me. And so that kind of kicked off my sexuality and my sexual journey and I decided that I'm pansexual. As of right now, I'm pansexual, not gonna lie. There's, I really don't mess with like the labels. Um, I think they're important for people's identity um, so that they people can be validated and seen. For me, I struggle because I'm like, well, shit, I like, I just, whoever I fall in love with is whoever I fall in love with, you know? I just say that I like whomever I like. In terms of my gender, I don't subscribe to any of the gender norms. I, I never really have. Um, my mom would be like, you gotta do that because that's for women. And I'd be like, what the fuck is womanhood? Anyone can do that shit, you know? I've always been like that. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about gender another day. But yeah, um, that's that was my sexual journey that's in terms of my sexuality um and what i feel on the inside that's how i got to loving all types of people i just it was just a lot of like shadow work and i just put down my walls i was like what the fuck am i holding on so to heterosexuality like why am i holding on to it like what was it it was literally nothing like for me it was literally nothing i was just doing it just to do it it made no sense to me um so at that point i just came out of it um I began experiencing different sexual experiences um, with women, with men, with all types of people. Um, and I started like learning what I like. Like I, I started engaging with different people and having sex with different people. And not only that, but saying what I need, like saying what I like. People would do certain things during sex and I'd be like, oh, I like that or oh, I don't. And like, this is how I like this. And I think that that exploration was so good, which is why I think sex is beautiful like i personally think sex is beautiful like, i think it's best if you're trying to explore sex to really just like 
connect with your body see how your body responds to different things like are you getting tense are you loosening up um what are some things that you like do you like like breath play do you like you know trickling on your hands or trickling on your body do you like just being in close proximity like what arouses you what makes you feel really good and that's something that you can explore um that's something that you can explore by yourself it's something you can explore with others i think the most important part about exploring your sex and your sexual desires and your sexuality is really decentering this idea that sex like penetration is what you need because at the end of the day a lot of people need other things than penetration a lot of people are aroused by other things in penetration but we are we live in such a um, male dominated world that they penis and they're like penetration and then it's just like that's not necessarily the case for everybody um that may not be what everybody likes but again we're in a male-centered world so how men sexualize the world is typically how everybody else thinks it's supposed to go however there's many 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 different types and so as you're exploring yourself um think about those types of things that actually arouse you is it the touch is it the smell is it um the energy like is it the the intimacy what is it, the actual thing that arouses you because if you know that you will know how you best work how you best move in sex and you will also know what brings you pleasure in life um i know that one thing that people really struggle with in sex is like feeling judged or judging others feeling like they're not good enough feeling like oh well that person wasn't good at having sex and i think that that's really interesting because when we say someone isn't good at having sex we mean somebody isn't sexual we don't necessarily mean that um you know they're not good at having intercourse and it's like well maybe their sex is not centered around intercourse or penetration maybe their sex is centered around sensations and feeling and music and like really being in their senses maybe maybe there's a different way for them to experience pleasure and eroticism um that doesn't necessarily include penetration as the center of it um and so like i said we literally center our views and our judgments around sex around how we perform and how others perform in terms of the male gaze and when in reality we have so many different sexual types um so this is where i think that if you are having sex and navigating your sex through the lens of another and you're performing for another that is when sexual insecurity comes in and so this is why i think it's super fucking important that we know what we want and that we know what our sexual type is um so that we know how we're having sex in order to prevent performative acts um, i think a lot of people act performatively like i said because there's so much weight placed on oh are they good at having sex or oh do we mesh well having sex and a lot of people go into sex without even talking about what they like like a lot of people go into sex and they're like oh we're just gonna have sex and just like expect it to be good and it's like my friend I, I get it like sex where you guys don't have to talk about it that shit hits it feels like automatic connection but like most times you're gonna have to work on sex and like how you engage with people you're gonna have to work on that just like we work on our communication like learning somebody's body is an art learning your own body is an art it's a new level of intimacy when you know your curves and when somebody else knows your curves as well and if you're just meeting like you're probably not gonna know that immediately they don't know where to touch you they don't know that you know you get tingly when you breathe on their neck they don't know that if they touch your hip bone like you're gonna like shrivel like they don't know that you know it's just by trial and error and i guess expecting people to like be good at sex with you um when they don't know you or maybe when you guys haven't like genuinely had sex without the performance it's harmful to like self and others it breeds like so much insecurity and judgment you know and so it's important that we just let down our guards it's funny because even though sex is such a vulnerable space a lot of people do not let down their guards while having sex they don't let themselves uh, be vulnerable enough be slow enough be soft enough be essentially feminine enough um in order to determine what one wants i personally think that in order to step into that masculine role um that more dominant role during sex you have to soften first to figure out what you like literally put down all of your walls and if that means just sitting there nude and talking to one another um or hugging or let's what i i like to do i let's try this let's try this like like we can talk about it but i want to try this tell me if you like it <laughs> like like that's what i want to do um but I, I think that there's a certain level of vulnerability that comes when you both just are like let's analyze like our sexuality and what we how we like to move how we like to flow um so that 
we aren't just trying to perform from a like, am I good enough? I, it's important to step outside of performance and just allow yourself to be vulnerable and open and honest about what you want, um, to, to let other people put down their walls. Um, because when we expect other people to just do and to just get us without allowing them to see the softness and the parts of us that we, we really want to share, um, then of course the sex isn't going to be good or of course it's going to feel like of course, of course you're going to feel insecure you're going to feel like you're performing you're going to feel like you have to be like you have to do like you have to just go 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 um and and do sex the way that society says we have to do sex like i just want everyone to like think for a second like most people approach sex just in the way that society says me personally i jumped into sex and was like this is how we do it like these are our parts this is how we do it and it's like Baby, there's so much to, to sex, there's so much more to sex than your body parts. There is how much you want to have sex, there is what turns you on. I personally align, I'm on the asexual spectrum, so sex isn't actually something that like is, I'm not very sexual. I say it like this, um, it's not necessarily about like, if I want sex, it's how I want sex. That is what turns me on. It's not about if I want it. Um, because a lot of the times I don't want it but it's like it's how you do it I'm not inherently sexual and that's where the blueprints come in that's where the sexual types come in that personally changed my game um, my sex game and how the confidence that I have in my sex like obviously I've been going through all this unpacking my sexuality um, decolonizing my sexuality like making sure it's not taboo opening myself up like I've been doing all of that work um, and kind of really working to approach sex with a less performative behavior um but the thing that really changed my life like this year was literally this year um i have been on a search for pleasure and eroticism and um joy in my life intimacy in my life i've been searching for that and so in every moment i try to connect with joy and pleasure and one thing that I was learning when I was in Cancun, I kept saying like, everything feels like sex. There are certain things that feel like sex to me. And I was like, why does this feel like sex? Like sometimes I, I take a lot of pictures and I take I pick, take pictures of everything that I find beautiful. Everything that enlightens my senses. And I, I realize that the things that I think are so beautiful and are just captivating and like, <laughs> like, uh, like those are the things that make me feel so much pleasure that I sense it in my body in a very erotic way and so that's how I gain intimacy that's how I gain closeness with people and things around me is through my senses and through my energy um and so when I was in Cancun I was like this drink tastes like sex this water feels like sex like being on an adventure feels like sex and it's like why does it feel like sex for me Things feel like sex because they bring me pleasure, they bring me joy, they bring me an orgasmic release, a feeling of rest, a feeling of excitement. All of these things that we categorize and we place just with sex, like just intensity and like, ah, and like, oh my God, I'm so happy. This is orgasm, right? Orgasm. The orgasmic joy and the orgasmic pleasure, that, those are the things, those things that you feel in sex, like where do you find those in your everyday life, right? And for me, I kept feeling like a lot of things feel like sex. And I was like, damn, all of, all of my senses essentially were aroused um, as if I was having sex. And I personally think that the more your senses are aroused um, when you're having normal interactions, the more you're able to tap into the joy of those things, the more you're able to connect to your joy, connect to your intimacy. Um, when you're able to do that, then you really are aligning with your body you're aligning with your sensations and that's what empowers you during sex um, because you know what feels good um, for me it's my senses right i know that things that i sense make me feel good which means i know that during sex i need to have a lot of senses activated that is what turns me on and um, what confirmed this what confirmed this i went to therapy like two weeks later we were talking about random stuff my therapist was like have you heard of like Sex, Love, and Goop on Netflix. I was like, no. She was like, have you heard of your sexual blueprint? I was like, no. <laughs> and so, so I'm like, nope, I don't know what that is. And so she's like, okay, so the sexual blueprint is like basically a test, a quiz. It's kind of like a love language, but for your sexual desires and like who you are um, as a person that seeks pleasure. So it's like how you seek pleasure, how you like sex best, 
all of these things and so knowing your sexual blueprint allows you to not only know what you need in sex but also to let you know what brings you the most joy in life and how to seek that goodness in all aspects of life so i was like okay so there's a test and then there's also um a netflix series but watch the fucking series it's absolutely amazing it's on netflix super cool it'll change your life so i take this test and at first i took the free one and i got sensual and then i took the longer one and energetic sensual shapeshifter were like 100 percent the same like the same number except for yeah that they were the same pretty much percentage wise um and the main one was um energetic so i got like energetic sensual shapeshifter um and the two last ones were like kinky and sexual sexual was three percent for me and it literally made so much sense because i am on the asexual spectrum so that means i'm not sexual um and I was like, oh my god, this makes so much sense. I don't value sex in a sexual way. I value sex in an energetic way. I value sex in a sensuous way. What I mean by that, I gain pleasure from my senses. I gain pleasure from energy. So I can orgasm just by hearing or seeing something. I always say like I can make myself orgasm just by thinking or by sitting here and like envisioning. When I used to have sex with my partners, I would literally, I just like shake. Like energetic people typically like shake with orgasm and like, oh, it, it's great actually. Um, but my, my partners would always be like, oh my God, like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. I just would say it feels like so much energy. My nerves are like, zzz, it, it's hot. Like it feels, I used to always say like, it feels like so much energy in my body. I need the desire. I need the withdrawal. I need the just energy I love feeling energy like I need to come with the energy you know um the breathing the, the breath work breath work is great for people that are, are aroused energetically there are so many different blueprints I took this quiz and I got energetic all those things but I wanted to read like essentially what each one is and definitely take the test this isn't this isn't like an ad or promo or anything like that I just it really helped me so anyway <laughs> so energetic Turn on, space, longing, presence, eye gazing, light or hovering touch. They feel more with less touch, more space, sacred, sexuality, tantra, kundalini, yoga, meditation, breath work. By the way, I'm a breath work facilitator and like, what are the odds of that, you know? Superpowers, orgasms without touch, told you bitch. Altered states, intuition, deep connection to intimacy, shadow, sense of superiority, I am more spiritual than others. What the fuck ever. No. <laughs> Can easily shut down if they feel you're not fully present. Listen, bitch. Dealing with people who have the sexual blueprint is very hard for me because it doesn't feel like they're present. Just fucking. Anyway. Can become overwhelmed with too much touch or stimulation. This part is really interesting to me because literally if you, if you're penetrating me or touching me too hard or just consistently, I will literally go numb. And that's actually something that Jaya talked about as an energetic blueprint, you will just go numb if it's too much. Sensual, turn ons, pleasure in all the senses, music, beautiful surroundings, luxury, textures, essential oils, water, delicious food, flowers, dancing, romance, massage, laundering, contouring, lingering, contouring, touch. Superpowers, full body orgasms, orgasms from gorgeous food, a beautiful sunset, an exquisite symphony. Shadow needs to fully relax into their bodies before they can feel pleasure or have sex. Can get stuck in their heads, especially if there's anything wrong in the environment. Too hot, too cold, sock on the floor, music too loud, etc. And again, these are blueprints for sex, but they also help you to understand what brings you most joy in life. So you may really like water with lemons in it or shit that looks good, you know? Those are those might be the things that you want to chase in order to feel that joy and that orgasmic like desire for life. Sexual, turn-ons. This is the sexual blueprint. Naked bodies, penetration, porn, genitals, cer cer certainty of orgasm frequency of sex super fun and easy to please usually orgasm easily generally very little shame sex is fun everyone should have it all the time shadow can have a narrow definition of sex only intercourse and penetration count can be impatient or resistant to learning or doing anything outside of the narrow definition this one reading it it kind of makes me sad i know there's a lot of people who are sexual but i I remember watching their the, the Netflix series and this guy thought he was sexual because he was socialized just to as men are just sexual and he thought he really was and then when he started doing all these tests he found that he was actually very energetic and that he experienced something that made him cry 
he experienced energetic sex that, that, that made him cry. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm energetic and when I have sex with people, a lot of the time they'll like cry out of like release because there's the energy, like it's the energy. When you experience energetic sex, you some most times will cry, like release. Like it's so such a beautiful feeling. If you haven't experienced it, definitely like try to get an energetic person or be that energetic person because it's a release. But a lot of people have it in their minds that they are just sexual. Um, and so this is where the certainty of orgasm and the frequency of sex comes in. That thing that I was talking about where people are goal oriented and people um, think that sex is supposed to be a specific way. Um, that's what this like the sexual blueprint is. Certainty of orgasm is a huge one. Um, believing that the end goal of sex is to have an orgasm. Some people believe that, um, but that certainty of orgasm can make people feel like a failure if they don't make the other orgasm. Um, or And that's why fake orgasms come in, um, because a lot of people have a sexual mindset, even if that's not necessarily how they really gain pleasure. By the way, you will know that if you're, you will know you're not a sexual um, blueprint if, if um, you, when you're going through sex, you are feeling unfulfilled or like you're being judged. Um, or you feel a lot of insecurity around it. If you feel a lot of insecurity around the sexual blueprint um, and you don't really feel comfortable fully in being super sexual um, or you only feel like you're comfortable in certain settings, that might be a hint that you aren't actually a sexual blueprint but you're some something you're kind of just going along with because society says so. But anyway, some people really fucking love sex and it's just like penetration, boom, period. That's a sexual blueprint. Kinky. Turn-ons are naughtiness, taboo, the forbidden, playfulness, and exploring. <laughs> Very creative, endless ways to play, can experience tremendous healing and transformation through positive kinky experiences. Very true. Shadow, deep, deep shame, may not be able to acknowledge or communicate these, their desires even to themselves. Maybe closeted or hiding and afraid to share their kinky wishes with their partner. I felt that. The shapeshifter blueprint, this is the last one, variety, adventure, all of the other blueprints, lots of sensation at once, or shifting among the different blueprints, discovery, novelty, novelty excitement, and more. Shapeshifter superpowers, <sighs> erotically sophisticated, can experience pleasure and orgasm in many different ways, can please partners of any blue blueprint because they know and feel them all. Shadow, feeling like they are too much, too complicated, too changeable. They often shape shift into their partner's blueprint to please them and may feel starved because they never ask for what they want. Sometimes their complexity and changing needs can be confusing to them and to their partner. This is interesting. Um, so those are all of the sexual blueprints and I definitely recommend exploring yours just because it really unlocks a whole new idea of what sex is, what it can look like in your life how you want to explore it. I think a lot of people think, to be honest, I think a lot of people think that sexuality is something you just know from when you were born. And I think people think that because our sexuality is assumed of us. Our gender is assumed of us. But you, you see when those are assumed of us and we're not actually taught about the wide spectrum of things, then we don't get the opportunity to explore. And I know everybody, ugh, not everybody, I know that a lot of like anti-LGBTQ people are always saying like you're pushing that on them and it's like to be fair to be fair society's pus pushed a lot of sexuality and a lot of gender onto us a specific one um that has hasn't allowed people to grow and experience and explore if we're really talking about not pushing things onto people then there shouldn't be a standard there shouldn't be this is what's seen most in the media it should be here's all of your options friends and allow people to explore because at the end of the day we are supposed to explore our sexuality and I think people get so trapped in this like but this is the social norm and this is where I stand that they literally don't let themselves explore um, because it would be taboo or because um, they think that you just know your sexuality right when you're born it's like no baby this these things were taught to us and so if you're ever feeling a calling away from it it's probably you wanting to explore something because you know that you were assumed and basically initiated in something that you really didn't explore yet you know um i think that it's important to realize how many things are assumed of us how many things we do just off compulsory behavior just because like oh yeah this is where i'm at like somebody just told me i'm straight or like every girl in elementary was like liking boys and so you just like kind of just started liking boys and it's like what the fuck was that you know any fucking way <laughs> um but yeah i think um Personally, exploring my sexuality has brought out a lot of things. It's brought out so much joy and pleasure. It's brought out a lot of trauma, um, just a lot of trauma, but also so much healing through my understanding of myself and my trauma. Um, 
I love it. I, I personally am so thankful that I can now talk about sex without feeling shame. I'm thankful that I can walk around new without feeling guilt. Um, I'm thankful that I can masturbate and talk about sex and use these words without feeling awkward um, because I used to. I really used to. It, it, but like for me now, I feel so much joy and pleasure from it. I feel invigorated by it um, in a way that is very energetic very very energetic I think it's very intimate to be able to talk like this and talk to people like this without having somebody in your ears saying that's so obscene you shouldn't talk about that <laughs> but yeah I, I think it's important it's important to explore your sexuality because sex is so much more than penetration and it can be you can have good sex you don't have to fake orgasms you can literally have your body shake you can also on the other note you can also experience such deep intimacy without having to be in a romantic connection. You can experience the closeness that you desire um, while being free-flowing and while having that intimacy in multiple connections. Um, you can experience so much pleasure and so much joy just by looking at things, just by experiencing things. You can feel the orgasm in many different areas of life. You can feel that same invigoration in many different areas of life. And when you experience that feeling, you are going to be like, holy shit. <laughs> You're gonna be like, holy shit! Like this is this is it. This is what I've been searching for, um, and and so I, I pray that you continue to search for your orgasmic yes, which is that that idea of, or the orgasmic yes comes from Adrian Marie Brown. If you have not read their book, please read their book. It is called Pleasure Activism. It's absolutely amazing. I teach it to my students, or I have my students read it, and um, take the blueprint quiz. Take the blueprint quiz. I need to take a okay. Are you hot? Um, no. No. Okay. You go to the bathroom? Oh. Um, but yeah, take the blueprint quiz, definitely watch the Netflix show, um, and just let yourself unravel. Let yourself surrender. Surrender is a very powerful form of femininity. And it, like I said, in order to reach a powerful, dominant, confident understanding of yourself, you first have to surrender all of what's been assumed of you. You have to surrender and let down all of your walls. Basically, you have to let yourself be a clean slate and actually put yourself in those shoes, in that mindset of being a clean slate in order to let yourself explore and figure out who you really are without shame and without guilt. So I pray that that is something that you really step into. So it's okay to talk. It's okay to, to mention what you like, what you don't like without it having to be something so sexualized. Like we don't have to sexualize all of our pleasures. We can just talk about them and be like, yeah, this is what, this is what arouses me. This is what makes me feel good. And that's okay. So yeah, <laughs> more than penetration, sex, sexuality, and the exploration of it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I can't wait to come back and talk to you guys about gender and talk about intimacy and all of that stuff and probably non-monogamy um, in the future. So thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Have a good day.